We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God. I was glad when they said it to me, let us go to Hope Center. Jesus is in this house today, and great things are happening here today. Praise God. As we're turning to Genesis chapter number 28, what a privilege it is to be here. 2013, I believe, maybe 2012, I had an assignment to go to the state of Colorado to participate in a meeting there, and what a privilege it was to be ministered to by the ministry of your pastor, Brother Nathan Scoggins. And I felt in that meeting as a young man, I felt maybe like Elisha felt as there was just a little bit of a passing of the mantle. There was a brush. I came in. You had to leave. You had to fly out. But there was something that you imparted to me in that meeting. And my heart's desire has been to continue to connect with you. And so when you invited me to be here today some seven, eight, nine months ago, I read, readily accepted that, that invitation not because, just because of what the Lord's going to do here today, but because of the connection that I believe God gave uh, to me through you uh, back in 2012, 2013. And I give high honor to you and Sister Scoggins and to this church. Why don't you give your pastor and his wife a great hand? I thank God for them. Not only are they blessing this church, but they're blessing this region, and they have for many, many years blessed our fellowship and have blessed uh, people younger than themselves like myself and it is just a high honor to be here with them today. And I'm so thankful for this great opportunity. I give him honor as the newly elected uh, District Secretary of the South Central. I drove 12 hours to congratulate the new district superintendent. Well, I think we ought to give him one more hand. What the Lord's going to do in this area, in this region, through your pastor, his wife, and this church, and the leadership. Give honor to the other ministers that I have met, connected with this morning. Every saint of God, every guest that's here today, we're so glad that you're here. I'm so glad my wife is here with me today, and she's the better half of us, and I'm so thankful for her. Our children are at home. They're 12, or they're 14 and 18. My son is 6'7". My daughter is 5'10". I'm 6'8". We went to preach at one church, and the little girl, pastor's daughter, she's eight. She said, oh, the giant family's coming again. And so half of the giant family is here today. But we serve a great God, and he's here today. He's here today. My dad used to say, he said, God's good to everybody, but he spoils me. Anybody feel spoiled by the Lord here today? Praise God. Genesis 28 and 10, and Jacob went out from Beersheba and dwelt and went toward Haran. He lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father. And the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it into thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest. It will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob arose up early in the morning, took the stone that he had put for his pillows, and set it up for a pillar, poured oil upon the top of it. I want to preach for a few minutes this morning from this title, In the Middle of Nowhere. In the Middle of Nowhere. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. Jesus, I love you today. I thank you for your presence. 
I thank you for your people. I thank you, Lord, for your spirit that's moving through this house today. And, Lord Jesus, I just pray that faith would rise and be mixed with the word. And, Lord, the miraculous would follow, God, because of what you are doing in this house, in this house, in my life, in my heart. Somebody just claim it right now. Somebody just lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you in advance for what you're doing for me. It doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter what you're going through today. Jesus knows exactly where you're at. He knows exactly what burden you are carrying, and he's come today to help us in Jesus' name. And you may be seated. Praise God. This was not a planned trip for Jacob. He didn't call his local travel agent and say, I'd like to make a 500-mile trip. Could you send me a map, some places to stop, some good places to eat? Jacob didn't have time to pack his favorite robe and sandals because this was an emergency evacuation. If you read in the previous chapter, it was his mother who said to him, Son, thy brother, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. Esau, the mighty hunter, has decided that you are going to be his next trophy. Why don't you go to Haran over 500 miles away? So the homebody leaves home, all the while looking over his shoulder, just waiting for Esau to attack. He traveled 50 or 60 miles from home, and darkness fell, and he found a place to stop and to sleep. As he gathered stones for his pillow, he possibly gathered them with his protection in mind. I don't think he got stones because he liked sleeping on stones. I, I kind of like my soft pillow. In fact, I took the bait and bought the MyPillow.com, and I carry it with me everywhere I go because I like the pillow that I sleep on. I don't believe that Jacob picked a stone up and said, man, I think this will make me sleep better tonight. No, I think he got the stones and he gathered them for his pillow because he was not a master of the sword. He was not a master of the spear. He was not the mighty hunter like his brother Esau. But because of the fears that were in his life, he began to assemble those stones thinking that maybe in the middle of the night if something begins to come upon me, I'll, I'll have something to hold on to, something to defend myself, something to grab a hold of. How true it is for all of us as we find ourselves in unexpected circumstances and we find ourselves in the middle of nowhere that we begin to hold on to natural things and earthly things thinking that somehow they will be able to protect us they will be able to get us through the night but yet the fear persists and the darkness rages on but I'm glad tonight that wherever we are and wherever we lay our heads down to sleep the Lord knows exactly where we are yeah. hallelujah sometimes life brings us to unexpected places at unexpected times through unexpected circumstances. All of us have faced those moments of change that are brought on by that phone call. A diagnosis, a letter in the mail, a meeting with the boss, or just by a season in your life. Someone here this morning may feel like you're in the middle of nowhere and darkness is falling and you've grabbed a hold of whatever you can grab a hold of. But I've come to tell somebody today that God is here to help you and God knows exactly where you are at. Hallelujah. You are not alone. God knows where you are and God will speak to you in the middle of nowhere if you will let Hallelujah. Sometimes life has that little worrying symbol upon the face of our life, and it says recalculating. But I'm glad that even when I don't know where I'm at, even when I'm just stumbling, trying to get away from the things that seem to be following me, when I'm gra grabbing a hold of some stones from my pillow, I'm glad that God knows where I am at. Yeah. Hallelujah. We had a lady in our church that suffered the tragedy of losing a spouse, and I can't even imagine the grief that was in her life. But one day as she was in the depths of despair, she was reading her Bible. She came across the scripture, and you must know her name was Lois, and everybody called her Lo. She called her son excited. She said, Johnny, the Lord has spoken to me today, and everything's going to be all right. He said, Mom, what did the Lord say? She said, I was reading my Bible, and I found a scripture. 
He said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know what your name is today. I don't know if it's Lo or Bill or Sarah or Gertrude or Martha, but he knows where you are at. Hallelujah. In the middle of nowhere, I may be running from my past. I may be running from my own mistakes. I may even be a deceiver, but that's the love and mercy of God. Even when I'm running because of my own mistakes, he's following me saying, hey, I want to do something in your life. I want to open up the heavens. I want you to see something that you've never seen before, and I want to change your life. How many are glad he knows where you're at today? Why don't you just wave your hand at me? Aren't you glad that you know he knows where you are at? And so he sleeps in the middle of nowhere. Must have been a gift from God. I woke up in the middle of the night last night. And I said to my wife, I said, where are we? We travel full time half for three years. And I, sometimes I don't even know where I'm at. It happened last night. I said, where are we? We're in the Drury Inn in San Antonio. Jacob fell asleep in the middle of nowhere, 50 or 60 miles from his home and 450 or so miles from his destination. But God knew exactly where he was. Four times we find the word behold used in this text. And I think the, the Lord's wanting us to understand there's some things that we need to see even when we think we can't see anything. sometimes that we, we discount God's ability to meet us in certain circumstances and we just kind of write God off. No, he can't talk to me on this Sunday morning because of this reason or that reason. But sometimes it's the complexities of life that really posture us to really hear from God like we've never heard from God before. It seems contrarian. It seems backwards sometimes. We would think that God's going to speak to me when everything's perfect. And God's going to speak to me when the sun is shining. God is going to speak to me when I've got everything mapped out. But sometimes God speaks to me when I can't even see one foot in front of my face. Sometimes God speaks to me when the night is the darkest. Sometimes God speaks to me when the storm is raging, but his voice is so sweet and so clear. I'm here. I'm here in the middle of nowhere. I've got you covered. I've got you in the palm of my hand. And everything, I've come to talk to somebody in the Holy Ghost. You didn't come expecting a word from God today. You didn't come expecting a miracle, but you're going to leave with one. Why? Because God knows where you're at even when you don't. Yeah. Hallelujah. First thing that God wanted Jacob to see was a ladder. He said, behold, a ladder. It wasn't just any ladder, but it was a ladder that reached from earth to heaven. Have you ever looked at your life and wondered, is there any way to get there from here? You see all the things in the heavenlies. You see all the promises of God. You see God doing this and doing that. But sometimes you feel so earthly that you feel like heaven is so out of reach. We've all felt that way. Sometimes God's heavenly realm of blessings and favor and God using us seems so far away when we recognize our own earth and earthiness. We recognize our own failures. We recognize our own faults. But he said, Jacob, I know you're a deceiver. Jacob, I know you don't know what's going on. Jacob, you don't know where I'm leading you. But I want you to see a ladder that reaches from where you are to where I want you to be. There is a way to get there from here. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us, everybody say, let us. Let us, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to, to help in time of need. I don't have to tiptoe. In the presence of God. I don't have to be reticent. I, I don't have to be bashful. But the Bible encourages me to come boldly. Yeah. 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 Jesus, thou son of David, yeah. have mercy on 
me. Hallelujah. The enemy will try to get you to stay in a corner somewhere. The enemy will try to tell you to sit there and shut up. But the Savior invites you into his presence to come boldly before him and say, I know I'm a mess. I know I'm lost. I know I need a word. But God, you can give it to me today. Hallelujah, there's a ladder that reaches from earth to heaven. There's a way to get there from here. But something has got to rise up in our spirit that says, I'm going boldly. I'm going boldly. I'm going boldly to get the help and the grace and the mercy that I need. Hallelujah, it seems that most places I go that for some reason people are scared of the pastor's office. And I'll just tell you, there's nothing scary in there. In fact, he's got a big candy bowl in there. And if you don't go for any reason, go get a piece of candy after church out of the pastor's office. Growing up, I was never scared of the pastor's office. In fact, I would go into the pastor's office and I'd look for that candy. I'd even take out his stationery and I'd fold it in half and I'd make paper airplanes. And I'd go out in the hallway and throw his stationery down the hallway. Somebody brought him some banana bread. Come on now. But bought, brought him some, some homemade chocolates. There was no hesitancy in my spirit just to say, you know what, I think somebody needs to sample this. In fact, I, if he wasn't in there, I'd sit in his chair and I'd just spin around like this. And I had a big old time in the pastor's office. You know why I wasn't afraid of the pastor's office? Because it was my father. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've come to tell somebody in the Holy Ghost, you've got a father in heaven that loves you and is concerned about you. And somebody just needs to come boldly today into the house of the Lord in the presence of God and say, Lord, hallelujah, it's time to rejoice again. It's time to taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Hallelujah. There's a ladder that reaches from here to there, but somebody's got to want it. If you hunger and you thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. Woo! Hallelujah. If I say there's a ladder, a ladder that reaches from here to there, are you willing to climb it and see what God has for you? Hallelujah. Amen. I need a volunteer who was on the platform today. That guy right there. Thank you, Sister Scoggins. Amen. He looks like a perfect pit, pick. Amen. One day I was in uh, a place like Home Depot, we call it Menards. I don't think they have them this far south. But Home Depot, Lowe's, and there was a man on that end of the aisle, and I noticed he was looking at a shelf, and and he was looking at a shelf, and he was uh, he was looking at a shelf, and th what he was looking at was a little higher than what he could reach, and and I watched him reach up for it. He's learning. <laughs> I watched him reach up for it, but and then he got on his tiptoes and. And he still couldn't reach it. And he looked around for a ladder. He looked around for an associate. And he, and he couldn't find it. And then he looked around and saw me. <laughs> Everywhere I go, do you work here? No, but what can I help you with? <laughs> and so he, he asked me to come down. He said, sir, can, can you reach that up on that top shelf? This up here, this is what you want. Reach for it. This is what you want right here. Well, the one you can't reach? And I, and I reached it for him, and I handed it to him, and he went on his way, happily rejoicing, thanking the Lord. <laughs> Give him a hand. He was so awesome. And I felt the Holy Ghost speak to me. He said, if you'll reach for some things that are out of your reach, if you'll just show me that you're hungry for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a ladder that reaches from earth. Him. You may deserve the blessings of God, but I don't. You may deserve the mercies of God, but I don't. You may deserve the grace of God, but I don't. But He loved us enough. 
hallelujah, amen, to give us his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness and his spirit. But somebody's got to reach for heaven for some things. Hallelujah. So I start praying like this. I start praying with my hands up. I start praying like I was reaching to get a hold of something that I never had before. God, I know I don't deserve it. Jacob, you're a deceiver. Jacob, you're running because you deceived your dad. You deceived your brother. But I love you enough that I'm putting a ladder that will reach from earth to heaven. I'm reaching a ladder that will help you overcome your failure and help you overcome your past and help you overcome all the things that have tried to drag you down. There's a ladder that reaches from earth to heaven. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, behold a ladder. Second thing the Lord wanted Jacob to see, he said, behold the angels. Anybody believe in angels? The Bible says they camp around about those that fear him. He said, behold the angels ascending and descending. Reason would tell me that if they are ascending first and descending second, that they were there all the time. Hallelujah. He just needed the Lord to help him see what was there all the time. Because sometimes in the middle of nowhere, we feel like we're by ourselves. Sometimes in the middle of nowhere, it's just me, God, and I'm not even sure if you're here. Speaking the truth. God, I, I, I'm here by myself, and I'm not even really sure that you're here. Jacob had to feel that way. We've all been there. We've all had those circumstances for just a moment. We wondered if God was even really here. If God even really cared about who we are. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, something begins to shift, and the scales begin to fall off our eyes like that servant of the prophet. And we begin to see, hey, there... There, are, there really are more that be for us than be for them. And, and I see some angels that are here. And, and, and I see that God has sent some, somebody to help me. He has sent his ministering spirits to get me from here to there. I'm not by myself. You're not by yourself. You may be in the middle of nowhere, but you are in the company of angels. Why? Because the hand of the Lord is upon you. Hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands right now. Hallelujah. God, open my eyes. God, open my vision. Let me see that, Lord, there are angels that are ascending and descending. Hallelujah. Amen. I was teaching for a season at Gateway College, and I remember one morning, it was early morning prayer, and I, I, I was praying behind the chapel, and there was a wall there, and I heard one of the young men out there, and he, he's been an evangelist for the last 16 years, what a wonderful young man, but he was out there praying, he'd been there every morning, and that particular morning, nobody showed up, I don't know if it was finals or what was going on, but he was the only one out in the auditorium, but I was back there, unbeknownst to him, and, and he was praying out here, and I was praying back there, and I heard him saying, God, I can't believe it, I'm in a Bible school, and nobody's in the prayer room, I'm in Bible school school and nobody came to pray. I'm here by myself. Nobody's praying but me. God, what's the world coming to? And he's just pacing back and forth, pacing back and forth, turning around. So I, I got over here by this side. He still didn't know I was there. And I waited till he made the turn to go back. And I just got in right behind him. God, nobody's here. And I was right behind him. And I just waited till he said that one more time. I said, I'm here. He about came unglued <laughs> as he realized, you know what? You're not here by yourself. Hey, Elijah, there are 7,000 who have not bowed their knee to Baal. Somebody needs to know. You may feel like you're by yourself. You may feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. But God knows exactly where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I figured if Jesus needed an angel to come strengthen him in his hour of need, I, I certainly could use one. Hallelujah. The third thing that the Lord wanted Jacob to see, he said, Behold, the Lord stood above it. Is anybody thankful today that whatever you're dealing with, he stands above it? He stands with an omniscient point of view. I, 
I would think this far south, that there's some people down here that have read Louis L'Amour. I hope you don't preach against that. If you do, I'll repent. I'll bring you my books. But there's something about reading the Louis L'Amour. It doesn't matter how bad a crisis that individual's in. You just wait till that sacket shows up. You just wait till the hero shows, walks on. It doesn't matter how dire the circumstances. You know how that book's going to end. We read, we read the Bible sometimes with, a, with an omniscient point of view in the sense that we've seen history and we know how it turns out. But Jacob was in the crucible of being in the middle of nowhere. Oh, God. How's it going to turn out, Lord? I've left everything that I know. I, Esau wants to kill me. I've disappointed my father. I'm going to a land I've never been to before. Thank you, Lord, because you're above it. And you're the God of Abraham. You're the God of Isaac. And Lord, you can be my God, too. Hallelujah. Jacob, I want to tell you, son, I'm above it. And the land that you're lying on, I'm going to give it to you and to your seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west and the east and the north and the south. And in thee and thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. <laughs> Jacob, I, I, I need to get your attention, not just because of the, the dilemma that you are currently in. But I need to get your attention because there's a world that's waiting for me to do what I need to do in your life so that you in turn can go and impact the world and in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. This is not just about you and it's not just about me getting a blessing and feeling good and walking out saying I, I'm feeling better. No, it's about my life being transformed and being connected in covenant relationship with Jesus Christ through his death, his burial, his resurrection, and walking with him every day, that so others may look at my life and say, hey, I want to know the God that you're serving. Right, right, right. If God could take a deceiver and promise him everything to the east and everything to the west and everything to the north and everything to the south, then God can do something in my life. Hallelujah. He sees the end from the beginning. Does anybody believe he's still the alpha and he's the omega? He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. And his name is Jesus. And his name is Jesus. And he loves you today. He cares for you today. And Jesus has a plan. Hallelujah. Behold a ladder. Behold the angels. Behold the Lord is above it. And finally he said, behold, I am I'm with thee. I'm with thee, and I'm, I'm going to keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Hallelujah. Jacob, you're still going to have to go meet Laban, and Jacob, you're still going to have some trials, and Jacob, you're still going to have some troubles, but, but I'm going to be with you. You're here today and you've never been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's a gift from God. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. If you'll repent of your sins, if you'll begin to worship Him, God will fill you with His glorious gift and you'll begin to speak a language. You'll begin to speak words and sounds that you've not learned in a school. You've not learned by birth. You've not learned by family association, but it's the gift. It's the sign of the infilling of the Holy Ghost and you'll know, hey, He's with me. I may still have some miles to travel, but behold, behold, he is with you. Behold, is anybody thankful for the infilling of God's spirit? He's with me. He's with you. I don't know what you're facing, but he's going to go with you. He's going to walk with you whithersoever you go. Hallelujah. Jacob woke up. He said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. 
I didn't expect God to meet me here. I didn't expect God to speak to me at 9 o'clock on this Sunday morning. But he said, this is the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. A gate signifies a transition. It signifies a threshold. It signifies an invitation to step into a new place, a new anointing, a new understanding of what God's doing in your life. Walk through the gate today. You may be in the middle of nowhere, but I believe in this early morning service that there's a gate that God has opened. You say, I can't feel God where I'm at right now. I don't even know if God knows where I'm at. The book of Acts tells us that he is not far from any one of us. If we would just happily feel after him. Just kind of wave your hand at me right now like you're feeling after something. He's not far from any one of us if we would just... Feel after him. Hallelujah. My grandmother's house was built before electricity came to their area, and they added it later. She didn't have fancy light fixtures in the ceiling. She had just a bulb that, that hung down in the middle of the room, and there was a string that was attached to that bulb. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? When, when the sun set and you went into that dark bedroom and you couldn't see anything, you went into that back bedroom feeling for that string that was in the middle of the room because you knew if I can get a hold of that string and I can pull that string, my circumstance is fixing to change. Things that I couldn't see before. Things that I couldn't discern before. Are now going to be visible to me. Simply because I got a hold of something. That I had to feel after. When I was in the middle. Of nowhere. I challenge somebody today to let go of those rocks. Those things that aren't going to protect us anyway. They're not going to help us anyway. But we hang on to them in the middle of the night thinking this is going to get me through. No, it's not. The only thing that's going to get me through is him. The only thing that's going to get me through is his presence. Hallelujah. I've got to walk through that gate feeling after him saying Jesus you know where I'm at and you know what I'm going through hallelujah stand with me in this house today hallelujah when I don't know where I'm at he knows where I'm at and he knows what I'm going through he knows what I need he knows how to get me through and today he knows where you're at. And today he has the miracle that you need in this house. Hallelujah. I wonder if there's anybody here today that you need a word from God. You need a miracle. Just lift your hand right now across this building. You've got family members. There are things, there are situations you don't understand. Hallelujah. I wonder if you just step out from where you are and come join me around the front of this building today. Amen. As we come with our faith and as we come feeling after him. Amen. You need a healing in your body. You need direction for your life or situation. Hallelujah. It may seem dark, but he wants to turn the light on today. He wants to turn the light onto your situation today. Hallelujah. Come around the front of this building today. Come with faith. Come boldly. Come into your father's house. Come into the throne room today. Hallelujah.
Jesus, I need you today. Jesus, you're my hope today. Jesus, you're my strength today. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Feel after him. Call upon his name. Hallelujah. Just for me. 